second-hand coat I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat I tell my daddy not to be depressed All I need for happiness is the best I want a dime and nothing else has appeared And when it comes to men, you know how I feel I want a real man Give me a real man, you know what I mean I need. What is up? You guys all set and fired up? Ready to go? First day in for Ryan, so be nice to Ryan. Okay? He just got here. We want to get him off to a good start. <laughs> hey, welcome to Real Men, the show where men get real. I'm Tim Steves, your host, and we've assembled a great panel of all-star yakkers to throw some topics to. Let's uh, introduce them right now. Jean Paul is here today. Nice to see you, JP. How are you, Tim? That's the pensive look. I like it. And Chuck Byrne yeah. has dropped in. Good to see you, Chucky Doll. I can't do pensive. No, no. that's okay. There's no no problem. We'll get to something else for you. Lori <laughs> Elliott is here. Nice to see you, Lor. Hello. What does pensive mean? I don't even know. <laughs> and Ryan Belleville has dropped in. Word. Right on, Ryan. And actually, that's how we're going to get it started, this first segment. We'll uh, throw it over to Ryan Belleville for a little commentary. Oh, Ryan. Well, uh, what's wrong with the kids today, right? A, a big question is why are the kids of today so apathetic? Pfft, like I care. You see where I went with that? Okay. A big problem people think is that the young males of today's society have become disillusioned because of why, who knows, maybe the internet? They don't have to interact with their parents or friends, or maybe it's because of that nasty ecstasy. Me, myself, I don't think that the youth of today is really disillusioned at all. I just think that, like always, old people like to bitch and complain about the young, and now with the internet, they have a wider forum to spread their word. So they can sit and look at the internet and go, those kids today are crazy, instead of just the television or the radio. Because I know that it might be the ecstasy that's screwing up the kids today, but my parents, God forbid, they ever smoked marijuana or did acid or cocaine in their generation. I don't know. That's just a thought. What do you think, Tim? <laughs> I th okay, that's an interesting theory, Ryan. And that's a good way to get started, I think, today on Real Men. Uh, I think it's just the pants don't fit. You know, these kids running around in their giant <laughs> pants. Is that the problem, Chuck? Well, it's annoying for me because I go out to buy a pair of pants and there aren't any left. <laughs> These kids are all stealing my pants. You know? Everybody's into the husky sizes the on Husky you. size, the portly cadet. Whatever happened to the <laughs> legitimate portly cadet? And there's ten kids running around in the same pair of pants. You yeah. just don't know. What I think is interesting is we have a tendency to blame the children without really blaming the parents. I agree. Amen. Uh, I agree. It's, it's the parents' fault. Uh, regardless of what people say, it's always going to be the parents' fault. Your kid's a criminal. It's your fault. Period. I don't know if you can go that far. You really believe that, Chuck? I really believe that. I really believe that. I wouldn't go that far, but I would go that, because uh, some kids tend to, your parents lay down the foundation and they say, okay, you know what, this is right and this is wrong, and then as you grow, you experience different things, and then you make choices. But, it's, but see, that's the problem, is parents lay, lay, okay, you know, I've taught my son right and wrong, now I'm done. Now he's a teenager and he's going out into the world. It's not a job that ends. Oh, I know it's not a it's job. It's a continuous that, I know it's job. Not, I know it's not a job that ends, but sometimes you can do and do and do, and then they don't and don't and don't. But I I'm know, not. I, I know a lot of people who like had great families, the ideal family, and you always see that that there's always that kid in everybody's school who had the perfect family who ends up killing himself, or had the perfect family who ends up going into rehab ten years later, you know, and it's totally screws up their life. Whereas the kid who has the horrible parents who beat the crap out of him ends up getting like a Harvard educate like there's always people can oh, break yeah, out of that. There's always exceptions to it. Ryan, I think that you, the inter sorry. That's okay. Ryan, do you think that the the, the kids today are any different than uh, other other generations? Is there more discontent? Um around? I I think that you just have more choices. It's more your yeah. own you're allowed to make your own choices more so now. You have to make as a kid cuz you are sh like it, it was basically your parents when my parents at least their parents were like you do something wrong, oh, I'm going to beat you or you're going to be in <laughs> deep trouble. Whereas now, as a kid, you have to make your own choices. You're by yourself when you're a kid, too. Like, I think family is like the last bastion of safety for kids today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't have it anymore. They, own, they have, you know, you've got your, your double-income parents working. They don't, they don't sit and make a meal. They don't get to know their kids and stuff like that. Plus, you've got the Internet, which in, what I think is ignorance is bliss in, to, to some degree. Kids know way too much. We don't give them enough credit. They are smart. They're yeah. so much smarter than we give them credit for. They're sponges. And they see the internet, and they see what's going on in the world, and they're like, 
forget it. This world is screwed. Like they you know why? So there's no one. There's on. no one to regulate what they're. Uh, there's no one to regulate what they're watching. There's no one to regulate what they're looking up. And and again, back to Chuck's point, is your parents need to not let something else babysit your kids. Well, it's a flood of information with nothing, with nothing, with no filter, with no filters yeah. holding yeah. it back. But also, I mean, life used to be a lot simpler. I'm not saying it was necessarily easier, but it used to be simpler. You used to be able to decide this is what I want to do for a living and do that. Right. For 25, 30 years. But I won't retire. lie. I wish and I was. And nowadays you're saying people are going to go through at least eight different careers let's reset during what, their life. Let's reset what Ryan was saying about the quote unquote perfect family. Obviously, two parents and lots of money. Is that really the perfect family? Like, no. Well, no. I don't think so. I mean, I was, um, I was the, definitely out of the norm in my generation. For, I had my parents were both together, and you know, it was, everything was going okay. We were in like a nice middle class family, and then like totally platonic kind of typical family we had a dog and a cat and I was probably one of the only people I know that had that everyone else had either single parent family well, yeah because I grew up kind of different too like uh, I was adopted by this rich millionaire white guy and uh, I had a little brother and I had a white sister so you know we moved to Park Avenue we had in Manhattan fun going up there. it was great you know <laughs> and uh, then my little brother he never grew up and uh, what you talking about you know it was just awful <laughs> 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 I'm kidding I, grew, I, I came from one of those families where if the, if the dishes were done everything's okay right if the beds are made then it's all good you had it's not dishes? gonna get down to what's really <laughs> wrong you know well, well I mean, I, oh. every family situation is different, but the, the overall trend, I think, is, is uh, a lack of direction. You know, apathy, that, that's really what apathy is. It's you're not driving towards anything, so you're just kind of floating around. I think well, we I, need I think... to embrace the youth like Ryan. He's talked yeah. about doing ecstasy. You know, kind of, that drug makes you want to have sex. Like, how could you not like a drug Waking like that? Waking up makes me want to have sex. Well, no, sex. okay, I don't like the fact that nowadays it, it's like, everyone's like, the raves! It's all seconds. the raves! The kids are going to the raves all the time. But, I mean, like I said, my parents, their parents blamed the rock and roll music for right. screwing up then. It's always going to be something. Exactly. It's okay, when we something. come back, we're going to talk about why, why men die younger. Because they're discontent. I don't know, it all comes together. You see, we're coming right back. <laughs> You've got to keep the kids in line. So they got to have the fear of God and the fear of parents in them. Absolutely. You know, without humiliating them and without it, uh, you know, falling under abuse, they just have to learn to be afraid of authority. And that's a problem with, with modern youth today is that they're not afraid of authority. How you doing? Welcome back to Real Men, where men get real. As you can see, JP's here, ready to go, so let's throw it over to him. JP! Why do men die younger than women? Well, it's because we can finally get some peace and quiet. <laughs> I'm kidding. We don't love you. We hate you, ladies. Um, but is it because we don't go to the doctors? No, that's not the reason. Women go to doctors so that they can live longer, because there's always a sale at the mall, and they've got stuff to buy. Is it because men are in dangerous professions? We're in dangerous professions because chicks dig scars. I'm telling you, they love it. I have one on my ass, but I can't show you that one. Can we say ass on TV? I just did. <laughs> okay. But the real reason why men die younger than women is because we run out of money and we can't afford the really good chicks. Tim? <laughs> That's it, JP, you think? Just running out of cash? According to my statistics here, Jean-Paul, in 1920, men only died on average a year earlier than women and now it's like six years so what's the what in the last 80 years or so Chuck what do you think's happened man there's more unnatural deaths I think I think uh, I wonder what the numbers are like when you when you just put them to natural death because I think there's a lot of men you know like the in in the US the homicide is the leading cause of death for uh, African Americans African American men yeah, but what about like so heart yeah, I'm looking at you. So why, why, why would you be looking at me? <laughs> because, because you're darker than You know what? I I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, also I... there's suicide, too. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Suicide, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. brothers kill yeah. themselves, too? Is yeah. that what it is? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the homicide, it's the suicide. It's all the minorities. That's the pesticides, up, the you negro sides. Fence, you guys are just... One at a time, one at a time. Well, actually, you know, white male suicide is like really high. Like males, middle class, really high, especially younger ones. Uh, and that also adds to things because it is a higher rate for men than it is for women. And we're a, so a society that bases so much emphasis on status. And that gets guys just going, I want this and I want this and I want this. And plus you guys are not an introspective gender. 
You don't like looking at yourselves. You don't like knowing the truths about yourselves. No, no, no. You like living fast. You like the, the immediate gratification of things. You know, you like, you like acting like little boys. Go, I'm going to go have my fast food tonight, and nobody can tell me otherwise. <laughs> yeah. That's why men live longer than they're married. But, but Laura, how, what about all the nutritional the guys are, seem to be working out, the big swing to healthy eating? I, it, why isn't that helping the numbers at all? Or it doesn't seem to be, you know? I don't know. I, I think, think it's... Personally, sorry to cut you off, Lori. I think guys are working out to get the women. Guys aren't working out to be healthy. Guys aren't running more to 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 get well, that stamina. I think guys are, you, they want to be buff and yeah, hey, baby. There's, there's, there's a lot, a lot of, pe of drugs there's a lot to of get people that working out, but for every one guy who's working out, there's five who isn't. Isn't? Who isn't? Who isn't? Or who isn't. <laughs> and also, I'm sorry, also what? I don't have an education. Just leave me alone. But uh, I mean, there's a lot. There's still. I mean, you look at America. Obesity. Is a huge problem in America. It's a, big, it's a problem in Canada. It's a problem in my apartment. It's a, <laughs> it's a problem in a lot of places. And and you know, and obesity leads to a ton of health problems. But you know, why do you guys eat thing. so much? Why do you guys eat so much crap? Like, because why? the only reason guys, I mean, most guys, uh, they got their mother cooking for them mm -hmm. for most of their lives. Then when they move you out, go to, you go to university. Usually have a food plan, or you're eating craft dinner, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, if you get married, most guys are counting on the fact that their wife's going to feed them. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's um, not happening. Guys, I think like, a lot of single like guys, taste. a lot of single guys are lazy. You yeah. know, it, yeah. yes. they put in a long day at work and they're coming home and they're saying, "Screw it, I'm going to hit the drive-through." Right? Yeah, but I, I don't think that women necessarily <laughs> don't even have to eat put in the long day work. better all the time either. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I know a lot of girls who are like being image conscious, and so they they don't they eat less or like less fatty foods, but they're actually eating worse food for you. They're not getting like proper Lettuce. nutrition. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're eating too many Bowl vegetables. They're not eating enough. Eating food. too many vegetables? Well, if all you're eating is vegetables, you're gonna yeah, drop they're, dead. They're not. They're not. Women eat better death than men. Death by vegetables, in Ryan? Yeah. Really? Well, I think, death I think by vegetables. More balanced. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, vegetide. Sure. Is that yeah, the yeah, carrots? Yeah, way more balanced. Carrots, the silent killer. Plus, what I mean, <laughs> like, at what age are men dying? Like, is it bad to die younger? Like, who really wants to live to be old, man? Like, I do. I, I, I don't want to live that. to be old. I, I want to live to be old. I don't want to be one of them old cantankerous. Because when I get yeah, old, that's the whole payoff. I want to be. <laughs> I want to be old for and yell life. at people, and then I want to die. Yeah, but uh, our life expect you, you. You should look forward to getting old because by the time that we get to an age, uh, like where let's say by the time any of us could be seventy. That like possibly cancer could not be as much of an issue with the new genetic stuff, and they think yeah. our life expectancy could have an extra 30 years yeah. uh, over See, our parents. You white people, segment. you white people are so positive because it's getting to the point where technology is advancing so much that no one's gonna die. And well, if your heart goes, you say, you know what, I'm going into Canadian Tire. I'm gonna get a new out. heart, and there's gonna be way too many people on the earth, and I'm not moving to the moon because some people are smart. I want to die. <laughs> really? Yeah, That's man. That's a great statement. You're looking forward to death, are you? I don't mean like I don't mean like next week. I mean, <laughs> well, you know. Well, who wants to be like sitting be in a old, nursing man. home with their nothing. body functioning fully and their mind just going like, you yeah. know, is that a bunny? Yeah, but if you're crazy, That's you won't know. right now. 15 hmm? seconds. Ryan, last thought from Ryan here. You're the youngest guy in the panel. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, looking forward to improving your health situation? Well, I'm only 22, so I still have the complex of I'm invincible at this time. Right. So I can smoke and drink all I want. But I'm sure, well, maybe not like that. <laughs> but hopefully, uh, I know when I get old, I'll be looking for any out I can to live a little longer. Yeah, well, look yeah. forward to those mid-30s, pal, when the <laughs> metabolism just goes <laughs> to hell in a handbasket. When we come back uh, from this break, we're going to talk about overzealous hockey soccer dad. You know that idiot yelling at the six-year-olds? Talk about that situation when we come back to real men. <laughs> It is real men, where men get real. This segment, we're going to talk about that idiot in the stands. You've seen him if you've gone to any little league or minor hockey where there's six-year-olds out there and some goof is, come on, Johnny, score! You know, I mean, uh, you know, what about it, Lore? Who are these guys, and, and where did this start? Like, it didn't seem to be around when I was playing minor hockey like now, you know? I don't know. I think it's in a world where, where sports, organized sports, make so much money, which I disagree with completely. But, you know, lazy fathers who, who think of their kids as extensions of themselves, as little mini-me's, if I may, they go and they just, they just think that 
They can run their kids' lives on the field so that they can make money off of them later on. And it's gross, and it's a loss of control. They freak out because it's something that they can't control. That really makes me laugh all the time, the, the, the guy who really thinks the kid is going to make it, because ah. the numbers are funny. I mean, there's 30. The numbers are frightening. The, the, it's, it's, what is there, 30-something teams in the NHL. Every year, about two positions per team open up. Wow. Do some math. You know, it's well, pretty funny. Yeah. See, but without those, without those kind of hockey dads, let's say, you might not have the like Bobby Orr's, or you might not yeah. have the Red Bulls. That's, that's natural talent, yeah. man. That's you, natural it, talent, but but the drive comes from competing. Like, right? My dad can't make me compete. It's either in you. You either have the heart, or you don't have the heart. You know what I mean? You can't teach that. It's Wayne almost Gretzky's like comedy. Dad, you Wayne can't Gretzky, teach funny. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky's dad built the ice rink in the backyard, but he didn't make Wayne go out there every morning at 6 o'clock. Wayne decided to do that. Exactly. exactly. Right. Like, exactly. It's, the, it's a pressure thing, too. They're just kids. They're kids. They want to have fun. They want to enjoy it. I mean, I was in a competitive sport for years, and I missed school. I missed so much stuff. And eventually, once the pressure started hitting me, I was like, I don't like this at all anymore, and I resent you people for making me feel like I hate a sport that I used to love. And how many times have you heard the kid, how many times have you met somebody, an adult, who says, oh, I was so good at piano when I was a kid, but I quit because my mom sucked the fun out of it for me, or my dad, you know what I mean? They mm -hmm. made me go, now I'm 30, I'm gonna get back into piano because it's for me now, right? Well, you, yeah. but you look at like um, uh, a lot piano. of people, like you're talking about, a lot of parents who live in small towns where a lot mm -hmm. of hockey players come from, or you, you have like same thing with like basketball, you know, you have parents who just they want a better life for their kid and they want their kids to be able to make money and make some of themselves and they go they have some natural talent at that yes and so they just push for it because they know that if they could be the best their kids could make tons of well, money and so perce the perception is that sports are an easy way out of poverty mm -hmm. which because because you know anybody can play basketball <laughs> it just requires you to pick up the ball and play you're it. playing basketball but very few people can play well Right. And even fewer of them are ever going to make it to the NBA. But it's perceived as an easier way because what's easier? Learning how to play basketball or going to school every day? Getting a job and or winning the lottery. Most, you know, of the guys in, most of the guys in the NBA, I'm generalizing, but most of the guys in the NBA were about 6'5 in 8th grade. Wow. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. most of them. I mean, yeah. generalizing. And most of them never finished their college degree. A lot of guys were like, you know, when you see a kid is 6'3 in 7th grade, then you know, hey, this guy might have something. And then if he, just, and then if he shows that he can bounce the ball and... Make shots. It's like, wow, maybe, right? But it's just amazing to think that your kid's going to make the pros. That's but I, I, I don't think it's just about yeah. making the pros. I think it's also about uh, it's 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 almost a, a, a group mentality takes over. If you ever if you've ever watched the parents at a at a soccer game or something, and, and it's not just the men, the mothers are oh, yeah. just as yes. bad. Oh, yeah. Soccer, yeah. I agree hundred percent. But, uh, but it's 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 that group mentality where where you know you, you have to question every call by the referee because. Everybody's convinced that the world's out to screw them over. You know, not just me, but he's going to screw over my kid, too, by calling him for tripping. And, and someone, made the, someone made the point earlier that it is living vicariously through your oh, eight-year-old. Which is a pr and what a dangerous state of mind, living vicariously through your eight- or nine-year-old. I mean, that's so like, silly. I, I, think, I think it's weird, too, because I, I find that a lot of the, the soccer parents or the hockey parents don't have a great job. And... They're, they're so angry, they're, you know what, I want my kid to do so well. And it's not because that the kid is that great. And another thing that, I won't say I really resent, because I get a lot of people, and they don't necessarily direct it at me, and they're always like, well, in the, the, the NBA, and, and I know it, not to say that you guys were directing that at me, and you know, talking about like, you know, the black kids and, and stuff like that. But when you look at any organized sport, I think you got kids coming from high school, whether it be hockey. Like, I mean, a lot of these guys don't go to college, but no one says anything about that. But a lot, a lot of, of people go to who college pay, well, because... Uh, they, to, get, like, to get picked up. But they, they how many of them? How many otherwise? people have actually? Yep. Same thing mm -hmm. with basketball. How many guys in hockey have their college degree? How many people in tennis have their college degree? But how many, how many of them would not have gone to college had it not been for professional? For it's sports. the exact same thing yep. though with basketball. But a lot of people say, "Well, look at all these young little." I mean, obviously, just... there's a great sports plays a great role in all this. It, 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 you know, it it's can. The, right. Just, it can. I, it's, I it's, think it's idiot parents we're talking about. I think organized sports is the wrong way to go, and organized crime is where we need the people. All right, let's get out of here on that I mean bottom line if you're going to the little league there's nine-year-olds out there shut your pie hole let the uh. kids play it's for fun and if the kid decides he wants to work his hole off nine hours a day that's his choice we're coming right back a couple more minutes don't go away on real men
Hey, welcome back to Real Men. We're talking about those overzealous idiots at the Little League soccer, hockey, baseball, what have you. Those parents that are just a little too out of control with their kids. Laura, you mentioned you uh, were a competitive athlete when you were a little younger. What were you doing? I, I dove, and this was when I this was when I was a little kid. I dove competitively, and I went to Worlds in New Zealand, and I was I really? missed a ton of school. You went to like, Worlds? Yeah, yeah, I was wow. on the national team for a long wow. time. I did wow. a lot of that stuff, but I missed a ton of school. But I was lucky. I was so fortunate to have parents who did support me and were, were didn't get didn't meddle in any way, shape, or form. You know, once in a while, I'd I'd get the you know first in the pool, last out, eh? But, my, but I found it was the coaches as well, which has to be addressed, because they're, you know, they're, they're just like parents. My coaches were like my parents. You know what's a coincidence? Now that I have a girlfriend, I'm into diving now, too. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's great. But I, but I, think, anyway. I think we're also, we're also forgetting that the parents, to, to some degree, they, they have a lot invested in this. Uh, yes. And and, uh, and so you can understand that they are going to be emotional about it. It's just how they're dealing with their emotions I think we have a problem with. Because, I mean, for a lot of parents, their kids are in sports, and they're thinking, well, maybe this will be a scholarship, you know, because they're worried about being able to send their kids to college. Mm -hmm. You know, if my kid can get a scholarship, that'll, well, that'll free up their entire mm -hmm. life. that will make a huge the, difference. So at what, point, at what point do you think it becomes money then? I don't think it necessarily becomes money. I think so it much always becomes money. Options. Mm -hmm. It's always money about money, man. If your kid is good man. at sports, it gives them more options. Because my, because my cousin money, got a scholarship it. actually to Columbia, Columbia University in New York to play football. And uh, his parents, I think, are great because they don't push him, but they support the hell out of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he's actually going to get his degree in, in like business, and he's going to be working for one of the biggest brokerage firms in New York. Well, yeah. I, you think know that, what I, mean? I think that it's not just the parents and the coaches, though, because the kids themselves, I mean, you're, you get your coaches giving you, like, telling you to go for it, you get your parents telling you to go for it, and then you watch television, and it's constantly like, Nike, just do it, and it's just sports yeah. all the time, and money, and television, and you're a superstar, rock star, do it. Just do it. I think it's it. so wrong. You should not get paid that much money. You should, well, no you way. Should get, there should be you more. Should no get way. Paid that, no you way. should get paid that no, much money. No, you shouldn't. But what, they, what we have to do is we have to learn. Because that money's generated, Lori. We have to learn, to, learn to be able to separate professional from seconds. amateur. Yeah. The reason We're not they, doing that. Lori, the reason they get that much money is, is because that money is generated. It's yeah, there. It has it. to go to somebody, so it might as well go to the athlete that's putting the asses in the seats. Hey, if you're an idiot yelling at an eight-year-old, Take a hard look at yourself. I I Tune in next time on Real Men when men get real. Oh, you're I just think it's ridiculous. There's no money in diving. I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lot of cake in the diving.